Hi, good morning everyone. My name is William O'Keefe. I'm a policy officer in the Vocational Education and Training Unit in DG Employment in the European Commission. Uh, so for international audiences and indeed European audiences who don't know the EU institutions, the Commission is the executive of the EU institutions. We come with policy proposals, then negotiate them with member states through ministers and our members of parliament. And then we work on implementation. So I work specifically in the area of vocational education and training, micro-credentials, of course, uh, and a range of different policy topics touching on skills and qualifications. So I'm very happy to be here today. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you for the uh, to the organizers. Uh, and really, it's a, a, a welcome opportunity to be in a room with the people that I've been connecting with so often online over, over the last two years to which I've been working on this topic. Uh, the use and exploration of micro-credentials, we're going to be talking about this for the next day and a half, and it uh, appeared on the EU policy agenda more, th more than two years ago, and we begin uh, trying to get to grips with this topic, the, the urgency around it, and the fact that there are projects, pilots, exploration, white papers, national discussion uh, really going on across the board. And it was quite fundamental, and the question always for any action at EU level is, what should we do? How should we go about it? Uh, and of course, education and training is a competence of the member states. And when the Commission takes any action or works on this topic at all, you know, we're going to deal with pushback and scepticism and outright objection. And that's certainly what happened when we started having conversations about micro-credentials. Uh, the scale of work is clear uh, and what's happening, you're all a demonstration of that and you're going to hear excellent presentations during the day from our colleagues in OECD and from uh, CEDEFOP on the amount of what's happening right now. But despite the fact that there is nothing new under the sun, short training isn't a, a new concept, uh, MOOCs aren't a new concept, online training isn't a new concept. But when we started to approach this idea of micro-credentials and talk about what we ultimately called a European approach, we really got a pushback, as I was saying, and for many it was considered this type of a, a phantom menace, you could say. And for this reason, I have a slide here, I've taken a still from the movie, the classic movie, The Phantom Menace, where there's a classic scene in this classic movie where a young Anakin Skywalker is asking uh, Liam Neeson, I don't know what the character's name is, he's Liam Neeson, <laughs> what are midichlorians? Uh, and I thought that, you know, I had a similar question, it's a very similar word, what are micro-credentials? And we've dealt with that topic endlessly for the last two years, and I really want us to move on and start to move on from this event. Liam Neeson, the wise Northern Irish man that he is, answered that midichlorians are the powerhouse of the force. And in the same way, I've edited it here that micro-credentials are the powerhouse of the workforce. Liam Neeson, in his wisdom, knows that he didn't need to answer what are they, but he answered what are they for. And this is the key thing that I find has been uh, opening up my understanding and helping the discussions I've been having and really kind of setting out a way forward because there is no one micro-credential, there is no one uh, common use of them, there isn't a need to harmonize them or bring them all together. There's a need to understand what they're for, establish their relevance, and when we work on that, that's our way forward. That's our way into all the work you're going to have to do on developing ecosystems, developing our approaches to QA, implementing them, ro rolling them out, marketing them, uh, and en enrolling learners and demonstrating the value. We have to hook onto why is there the interest in micro-credentials and what are we going to do with them going forward. So I really won't talk any more about what are micro-credentials, even though uh, I tackled this through a definition next, uh, but I want the conversations I'm looking forward to having with you are why are micro-credentials and what are we going to do with them. So our approach two years ago was to develop what's called a council recommendation. So the uh, title is quite explanatory. It's a recommendation, it's soft law. A proposal that was then adopted by all of the EU 27 ministers. And it's on a European approach. We couldn't land on anything more concrete, anything more definite, but I've grown to love this term. It's a European approach to micro-credentials for lifelong learning and employability. It's a legal text, it's written in Eurospeak, but it has been translated into all the EU languages through quite a process. And it was a two-year process to get to this. It's full of a uh, compromise and it's tentative and there were discussion, is this coming too soon? 
uh, what role will the EU play? Is it going to undermine? Will this action undermine the flexibility of micro credentials or empower the micro credentials? Is it coming too soon? Do, uh, and who do we interact with and who do we talk to when we present this recommendation? So the product that's out there now, the, the council recommendation itself sets out key building blocks. And then I'll take you through these briefly today. And my pitch and my message is that if we are going to start talking concretely about what are, what are micro-credentials for and what their purpose is, then these building blocks should really be uh, taken on board wholesale across the board so that we have a common starting point for talking about the micro-credentials, making sure they're interoperable, we're sharing consistent information on them, and that we're just able to tick all these boxes and we have this baseline in place and then we can get on with the real work of designing and implementing uh, valuable micro-credentials. The proposal, uh, the, sorry, the council recommendation sets out a common definition, standard elements for describing micro-credentials and principles for designing and issuing them. Uh, I'll come back to the slide after. Uh, I was told not to put a lot of text on the slide, but I simply have to because I'm a Eurocrat and that's how we work. This is the definition that we landed on. Uh, it's open, it's universal, it aims to be inclusive, and of course, I want you to take it into your projects, build on it, adapt it, make it fit for purpose, take some inspiration from it. And this is about building up the idea of what is the European approach to micro-credentials. This isn't trying to create an umbrella term for all activities on micro-credentials internationally or across the European Union, but it's trying to give a frame of reference for the people who are interested in micro-credentials being easily understood, building up quality, transparency, understanding. Just to touch briefly on the key elements and see the keywords running down the right hand side of the screen. It's a record of the learning outcomes after a small volume of learning. Let me tell you the hours that we spent discussing the terms small and short. We landed on small because of course short is about duration and a micro-credential. They're inherently flexible and the time isn't necessarily important, but it is that it's a short, concise piece of learning. Uh, the assessment is key. You need to be able to demonstrate the learning outcomes. So valid assessment is an established principle now of the European approach to micro-credentials. This is a, in this recommendation, the way it's been adopted, the assessed learning outcomes is, is key. An idea of being owned by the learner, this is something that Anthony Camilleri uh, planted the seed with me a long time ago of you know, the learner, the, micro, the graduates being able to bring their micro-credential with them, whether moving between company, courses, countries, you need to uh, have the evidence of your learning and bring it with you and not have it stored on a file in a student admissions uh, record system or in your HR file. And you're gonna be hearing later on today about the digitalization aspect, credential aspect, and that's underpinned here, enabled here, uh, enabling that micro-credentials must be shared and portable. The most politically sensitive topic was the idea of micro-credentials being uh, standalone or potentially combined into larger credentials. Politically, we couldn't get the word stackable into this definition, but of course the reality is, and we need to try and explain this message, micro-credentials are already there, they're already stackable, but nevertheless we couldn't get that word in here, but we do have the principle that they can be combined into larger credentials. And then uh, the, ultimate, uh, the key topic that must be underpinned by quality assurance. So this definition again doesn't uh, underpin a new EU quality assurance system for micro-credentials or suggest it should be harmonized or suggest it should be regulated into a one, uh, one size fits all. Micro-credentials occurring across the board, different sectors, different industries, different areas of education and training. And you already have QA systems in place and tools for describing learning. And now we're in a phase where these need to be adapted and evolved. And that's the conversations that are gonna be starting today. So I'm presenting this definition and I hope it's a launching pad for all the work that basically you have to do. <laughs> On to the standard elements. Simply, uh, these are the terms that as part of the European approach to micro-credentials, if you want to design and develop a micro-credential, if you want to give good, clear, consistent information on it so that the learner can uh, provide good information on it, so that the information is easily exchanged, that the micro-credential is interoperable, use these standard elements to issue information on your micro-credential. We're not handing out hard definitions or clear descriptions on these terms. We are saying to really use these terms 
and use these standard, standard elements to describe micro-credentials going forward so that even though they are very different and they have to be very different, we at least have a common starting point to be able to understand them, to be able to interrogate them, recognize them, and feel confident in them. And there'll be work going on in the update of the European Learning Model, uh, which uh, will come up again during the course of today, where these elements are going to be incorporated into the European Learning Model for describing uh, credentials and other types of learning claims. Then the principles for design and issuance of micro-credentials. It was two years of discussion and consultation, and we found we needed, we wanted to go a step further and begin to develop some, some narrative, some context, some understanding around micro-credentials. So we elaborated some principles, again, for all the open questions that we were getting for the conceptual questions, the cultural shifts that were happening, and really every project at all of the events that I've been speaking at, and I'm sure that you have been participating in these discussions, we set out these principles to be useful, to be an inspiration based on the feedback that we got from thousands of input to our public consultation and the research and the questions we were getting. I won't go through each of these uh, right now, uh, I hope that inherently the terms you see on uh, on screen that they are, uh, of course, uh, some way logical. When, it, like I mentioned, quality, we set out that there are tools for quality there, but the important thing is that the quality underpinning the micro-credential is clear and transparent and documented and is working towards earning the confidence in the micro-credential. Uh, learning pathways is the term we use because, again, we couldn't use the word stackability, but this is about the idea behind micro-credentials of curating learning pathways linked to a particular skill need and within that using stackability and the ability to combine micro-credentials to lead and to build and upskill and reskill. The recognition, of course, is key. We've been working on recognition of qualifications in Europe for 30 years and it's still not right. So let's not get into a situation like this again, micro-credentials, it is chaos, like in the title of my presentation, but let's at least use these tools that we have in place so that we can cut through some of the chaos, embrace the chaos, but at least have a common lexicon and ways of understanding the micro-credentials so that they can become the tool to deliver on all the goals that Anthony mentioned at the beginning. The last point you'll see there that I'll touch on here for now is information and guidance. And it's absolutely one of the elephants in the room that if we're going to have micro-credential systems, if they're going to become a currency for lifelong learning and a part of upskilling and reskilling, they have to be integrated into the information and the guidance catalogs, uh, you know, to earn the confidence of learners and why they would enroll and give time to these micro-credentials and that they can see the outcomes afterwards and the value. But of course, we have a lot of work to do because we're at such an early stage that for many learners and many graduates, we haven't even gone through the full cycle of them completing the micro-credential and seeing how they can use it in the real world. So those are the building blocks. So just to go back to the earlier slide, complementing the building blocks in this legal text in the council recommendation, we set out key areas for action. So I invite you to look at it and look through the text. It is more political and aspirational in nature. Uh, but we would need to give messages to the member states and stakeholders and implementers to again establish this message. First, looking at lifelong learning, skills and active labour market systems, micro-credentials are open and universal and they just need to be underpinned by cooperation. And you need to look at your ecosystems through which uh, you interact with all those stakeholders and see are they fit for purpose for micro-credentials. Micro-credentials can be on the, on the market faster, they need to be updated, they need to be relevant. We do have tools for designing learning, we do have tools for uh, employment systems, and we just need, you need to look pragmatically at how can we incorporate micro-credentials into your ecosystems. Then we established this point on the idea of delivering on the potential of micro-credentials. And in the text, we got quite a reaction to it because it looks like a demanding shopping list of everything you needed to do with micro-credentials, all the groups you could target, all the systems you could underpin, uh, helping disadvantaged groups, helping entrepreneurs, helping young people, helping people not actively in education and training. But of course, that's not it. That's not the demand. Again, why, why are micro-credentials in place? That's for you, the project runners and the pioneers now to decide, linked to a clear need. But we put all these ideas into the text to give inspiration again to the, to the member states and to the implementers. 
And within the text, we also set out a role for the commission, this idea of commission support. It's why I'm here today. And we are actively working with our colleagues in the OECD, the European Training Foundation, and CEDAFOP. We'll be starting discussions on the European Qualifications Framework and the role of qualification frameworks and micro-credentials through the EQF. There's funding available and options uh, and support coming through Erasmus Plus and also work upcoming on the European Learning Model. So we're trying to look systematically at the tools and supports that are in place at EU level and really have micro-credentials permeate throughout them so that we're playing our role in establishing, a, as I say, this currency of micro-credentials. Then looking forward, where do we go from here? I've made my pitch to you about adopting the building blocks. I hope that they can inform and be useful launching pads for all of your work. And this idea that we have at least these pieces in place so that we can get on with all the other work that needs to be done on micro-credentials. I also want to deliver the clear message on this idea of the potential. Right now, I'm not seeing in the reports and in the analysis and in the case studies that we're collecting, micro-credentials are very active, I would say, are very present in higher education for higher end and professional skills. But micro-credentials need, you know, have the potential to enable different types of learning, open up learning, more flexible access to learning for persons with uh, disabilities, for refugees, for migrants in different settings and enabling different ways. And this is the direction of travel that we need to ensure that micro-credentials take. They can't be captured for you know, traditional purposes. We need to really deliver on their huge potential. And lastly, I would say this idea of constructing learning pathways. In all my discussions, and particularly with the political, at the political level, and with the projects and people who are interested in micro-credentials, there's this constant assumption that micro-credentials exist to serve uh, earning degrees or lead towards degrees. And I really want to land the idea, or we need to work in the idea that actually micro-credentials for lifelong learning throughout, you know, for the adult workforce, for different types of uh, learning and enabling people and empowering people through curated, targeted learning pathways that don't necessarily or don't have to lead to uh, a degree in all cases. Because very often I get the question of uh, about deconstructing degrees into modules and into micro-credentials. And very often when I'm dealing with certain audiences, it really is the case that micro-credentials just are continually stuck by the by in frame of reference or by being tied or with their constant relationship with micro with degrees, I should say. So I really want to establish the idea of the relevance of micro credentials. Again, this idea of why are they there? And they need to have their own independent relevant purpose. Uh, and in this way, we need to really begin building the idea of constructing learning pathways. We've been talking about the idea of lifelong learning at EU level and certainly at national level since the 1970s. Uh, and it keeps coming and going, but I really think with micro-credentials, we have an opportunity to start establishing this cultural mind shift uh, towards this true concept of lifelong learning, and these are the vehicle to get us there. So, thank you.